Okay, hello people. Welcome to the working group meeting for foundational infrastructure. Um, yeah, let's uh, start with the open PRs. Um, see, we have an approval from Ramon here. Yeah, I joined Constantine this morning uh, while I was setting this up. Okay. Yeah, need an approval from Long. Yeah, so uh, we were a bit too um, optimistic, I guess, with uh, this uh, switch, switching over to uh, 15. Um, for some of our environments, we, we still apparently need the 13 version. Uh, otherwise, we don't have an upgrade path, so that's why we're adding it back. Yeah. When are we going to remove the PG10 then? Is it already? Uh, because um, that's still here. This is running locally. Well, I, I'm a little bit confused why you should need to uh, step sorry the postgres is running locally so should it medicine for, I, it's not a service depending on the yas provider it's something running locally and i wasn't i don't understand why we need to stay on 13 for example is the technical reason or is it more compliance so, it's, it's a version it's an upgrade path thing so we have upgrade okay yeah because you have to go through different versions to to end up at the, the latest right so latest is now 15 yeah 10 is still there ideally we should get rid of 10 but to keep the package right because you need the package to upgrade i believe But not the job. Okay. Um, yeah. So we have ten here. That actually should be thirteen, and then we have Postgres, which is fifteen. And then we can upgrade. But yeah, uh, pull request is there. Um. Actually, uh, uh, before we go all over all these board things, uh, Carson, uh, do you have anything that you wanted to discuss? I have nothing in particular to raise. Um, is there anything that y'all are thinking about in the syslog area that you'd want to talk about? Um, to be honest, I don't have a lot of contacts on it. Okay. Uh, I guess there's there's one thing to bring up that the for a while we were shipping a version of Go PS Util and System Metrics release that was causing panics in Windows Diego cells, mm -hmm. um, and we've since resolved that. We only heard it from one source and we couldn't replicate it, but <laughs> hopefully bumping the the System Metrics release will resolve that forever. It's maybe the only weird thing to call out there. Other than that. Wasn't there a, a TLS thing that we had last week on? Yeah, an, I don't see issue. the issue represented here, but it should, it, it is. Yeah, I think there's no, view for, syslog, there's no view for syslog issues, I believe. Or are these issues as well? No, these are PR. These are issues. Yeah, it's idea. just missing the Windows system. Oh, wait, no, there it is at the bottom. Uh, third from the bottom, feature add, add MTLS yes. support. Yeah, Ben's been responding a bit to that one. There was a feature request to add parity by including MTLS. Mm -hmm. I think uh, as of right now, Ben and I don't have any plans to go do that work. We encouraged a, we encouraged a PR 
or from the folks who want it um, and have filed this way as something to do in the future. Should we mark it as like open for contribution? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay. okay. There it goes. Cool. Yes. Um, yeah, if there's if there's nothing else to talk about from the syslog system metrics thing, then I may drop and let you all continue with your boss discussion. There was also this, but that stuff has been resolved, right? We had that so, uh, wrap up. Somewhat. Um, we, I, I proposed we could rip it out because it didn't seem like, or just from Ben and I's standpoint, it didn't seem like folks were using it and it was causing mm -hmm. problems with something else. Um, we weren't even testing it at that time, November. And uh, almost immediately, someone hopped in to say uh, that they are using it and we should be keeping it. So I was hoping, I kept it open in the hope that some a few more people would hop in and say, no, get rid of it. And then we could go get rid of it. But uh, that doesn't seem to be the case so far. Um, as, as of right now, we've we have added tests for it and we do plan to support it for the future. So we can, uh, we could arguably close this. What did we say in that uh, Bosch Linux stem cell builder 249? I think this was related to the, the TLS library that was being used by Syslog. Um, yeah, yeah that, that discussion, yes. Yeah. And uh, I think there was a there's a few libraries that were imported specifically to support RELP. And mm -hmm. uh, I forget what the exact resolution of this was, but as part of this discussion, Ben kind of raised the idea that um, no one is really using RELP. And that mm -hmm. was where I created the side issue from. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that was the GN2's open SSL thing. That's right. That one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so this. This is a bit of an uh, still follow on from, from that. Okay, but could you maybe comment here and close it uh, if there's yeah. no testing? I mean, I I can do that. Okay. Thanks. Um, anything else? I guess if I've made some of these issues in the inbox, I can mark them as waiting for changes or pending review discussion, if you all want. I don't know, actually, I don't know if I have power to mark them as things. Uh, so what we have for the on the board side is we have this, we have a, an issues view and then mm -hmm. PRs view. So in the issues view, we have, we uh, look at it this way and in the PRs, we look at it this way, I don't know, because I don't know, reasons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you also want that for syslog? Um, it's not so much the view. I'm just asking how, whether, um, uh, whether we should be characterizing those syslog PRs and issues uh, based on these columns more frequently, or whether that's something that you expect to be doing during these meetings. Uh, we only do it actually for Bosch. Uh, okay. Because that that's where the most stuff comes in. I mean, uh, and I don't have a lot of context in these things. Um, but will... yeah, it would be nice to to use these columns if, if that that's useful for you all because it it demonstrates what's uh, what's going on and what it's waiting for. So the so idea. Here's... Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I I don't have access to update okay. these columns. Um, would it be a good idea to just use the team to manage access? Like the approvers can edit this board or would you prefer to add individuals? Um, I don't think that the whole, yeah, maybe it makes sense to have the whole team. And probably not the reviewers, right? But approvers. Yeah. So we have the, uh, 
probably starts with WG usually, I think, right? WG dash. Unified collaborator. Something, something. Yeah. Um, Step one, that's approvers. Yeah. Right. Thank you. That should help. Let me check now. Aha, uh -huh, I can do it. Nice. nice. Yeah. <clears throat> so the the problem is that that uh, that uh, what's it? That field has only uh, it's, the field is shared between issues and PRs. Uh, so we have that's why we have a double meaning for each uh, yeah. thing, right? So pending review is for PRs and discussion is for uh, issues. That makes sense. Um, pretty straightforward. Do you, do you have any? Uh, do you care whether I archive the done column every now and then? Uh, yeah, that has to happen because there's a limit on the uh, number of issues that, that we can add, add on the board. So oh, we have also just this, this done column here. So <laughs> I can just archive everything. Okay. Uh, so that's what we now do. Uh, that do, does it for all the um, areas. Doesn't look like it did it. Oh, it did. Yep. There's like slowly going down as I'm refreshing the page. It's weird. Wait, did it? Yeah, now now they are back. Yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I've all, I've... Yeah, it's just like slowly going down as I'm refreshing the page on the project. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. Uh, all right. System. Cool. Okay. <laughs> GitHub. They don't do everything well. They do some things well. I mean, project. This project's view is already much better than the uh, the other project's view they had before. Okay. That um yeah, that looks good. This is uh looks lively. Um do we have filter here for uh drafts? Uh exclude drafts. Oh yeah, I like that. Oh that doesn't That took away the issues as well. So they don't do everything well. It's weird. Uh, no. Draft. Isn't it ex exclude? Uh, the problem is that this is a mixed view, right? So you have issues and um, PRs. And that's why it's yeah. not working, right? So here, so for issues, you don't have a draft state. They only have mm -hmm. like six. Like, they don't have yeah, so it's fine. Okay. It's fine. We can just really? leave them in the inbox. Okay. Um, is, do cards automatically get added to these tables through some GitHub yeah. action or other? Yes, we okay. have a GitHub action that adds them. Okay, sweet. Um, I think I got all the info I need, plus a couple tasks. Do y'all mm -hmm. need anything else from me? No, we're fine. Cool. Feel free to reach out if you do. Have a good rest of your meeting. Thanks. Okay. Yes, this one. Controversial. Yeah, um, I was. Is there a portion as you know having this issue? There was Besides, an issue. Uh, yes, but that was fixed uh, in the release itself. Yeah, yeah so, I, I think there are not a lot of. Uh, probably not. The problem is that this is a thing that. Uh, at least for our customers, a lot of them are using this at like older versions, right? So we cannot mm -hmm. roll out a new Opsman version or a new Bosch version because we cannot force them to upgrade this. Yeah, okay. Like a, it's more of a, 
yeah but yeah yeah if, if they don't if they don't uh, are not able to upgrade the dg agent then they're also not able to upgrade Bosch. that will fix this issue um no so usually so th th that's not really true right because dd agent is a thing that you if you have like a cf right you you co-located on all your instances so that is a bigger that is something they would want to do in a change window where they are updating their whole like deployment while updating the director is just affecting one instance and okay. it's basically, basically an operational concern i'm okay with adding it but when are we going to remove it right that's what why we added behind a, a flag right so people yeah don't uh get bothered by it and that's i think like there will be more it's more of a pattern right there will be more of these breaking changes in ruby ideally one when we find them we just add patches for this stuff so that because we we want to keep a bosch stable and the um templating the erb templating is one of our interfaces and it's a bit wonky uh but it could be considered a breaking change. Uh, okay. So I'm I'm fine with, like, by default you don't want all the like you want people to update their releases to be compatible, right? But uh, if that's not possible, ideally we have an option to enable the old behavior. Yeah, you you know that if if we are not going to the time frame, it will be there indefinitely, right? No. So I don't know, but how do you want to enforce a time frame? I mean, we can say we're going it, to, it's, it's the same with um, the uh, V1 CPI, like the R well, it CPI. Uh, like it's uh, like. It's a, it's a reasonable lean commit. So we can revert it whenever we feel the need to it, or we come across it again and we think. Uh, we think we can remove it again. So I don't know. And I think it's well contained, right? This is it's not all over the place, and it, it it's pretty clean, clear why we're doing it. Um, so okay. Well, well, yeah, I was just, yeah, just wondering um, whether you know about issues, if you know, okay, if not, uh, I was thinking maybe we can wait until someone has the issue and then introduce the change. Uh, but yeah, if, so we have, we have customers with that particular issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, if you push, um, yeah. If the the push. one that has been fixed, but it's still not like, uh, yeah, it's blocking updates. Well, we don't have any deprecation process here to in place. Uh, it will be nice to say, okay, in one year, <laughs> maybe yeah. something like that. Yeah, because we also have the other one, right? We have the... Uh, uh, Bosch, what's it? Bosch packages Ruby release. We have here that YAML patch, like YAML something. Yes. Why was this needed? Uh, is this the one? Nice. Where where did this come from? Patches. Training spaces in a file name. What is that the one? I don't know if that's the one I'm talking about. Is 
thought we had another one. And I don't think we set that Libyomo patch anymore. We had we had a Libyomo patch or something, right? Yeah, but I think that's for the old uh, like the older rubies. I thought I it was a three dot thing. Was it? Well, we started to patch. Oh, your patches, Libyomo. Then we probably copy paste it <laughs> in 3.1 and 3.2 as well. <laughs> because uh, this is for the specific LibYaml version, right? And I, I think we are already way, oh no, there we said LibYaml 2.5, okay. We specifically set that version. And where do we set? Uh, if you go to Ruby 3.1, is it the same? Three two. Oh, it's yeah, still the same with Yomo. Is that the latest version? Is it? Uh, well, I think I remember that was something Matthias contributed. Oh. Yeah, two five. Oh, there's a two seven zero. <laughs> but no, wait. No, this is something else. Where's that coming from? Just have a package for that or something. Are we bumping that? I mean, this is really, I'm really distracted at this point, but now I'm invested. <laughs> now I'm invested. Maybe we can go back to <laughs> original. Uh, I don't know. Oh, this, here, it does actually get it. But it is. Okay. Oh, it's I don't know. Oh, here, meta link get YAML. So yeah, they're still on 0 0.25 indeed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hasn't validated been validated since 2020. Yeah. Last but commit. yeah, if, if you know, have customers which rely, rely on that, uh, it's fine. Yeah, we, I mean, I know these are like a lot of, uh, I don't know, backward compatible compatibility related changes. So uh, in, the, in the past, we had a uh, Bosch LTS fork. Um, but ideally, we want to stay with upstream, right? Because that makes maintenance easier for, for us, but also, I mean, we can spend more time on developing features if we don't have to backport stuff to an LTS fork, but that's why we're trying to get these types of things in upstream uh, and be a bit more conservative about breaking uh, compatibility with older versions. So, so it's a bit of a trade-off. Um, yeah, I think it makes sense for, for the product, right? For the Bosch director as it's quite a, uh, Stability is quite an important aspect there. Okay, uh, let's see. This is still waiting for a person. Is he still alive? Yeah, it's people. Okay. Yeah, I will uh, keep this open and people uh, on Slack, probably better at this point. Okay, we'll do the same here.
<laughs> is it CL8 and yeah, so. So, um, yes, um, okay, um, I believe I have context on this, yes. That was your suggestion two weeks ago. Yes. And did, oh, I, did he link the issue? Yeah, he linked the issue. Should we ping somehow? Uh, you know, sees that it's not covered, and maybe we'll take action on um, Chris, do you know how to, to get this resolved? It seems yeah, like he has. Need... He needs to click the big red button. Yeah, but he did. Like he did the slash EC uh, no, CLA already. That doesn't really yeah. work. You need to click here. that uh, click big button. If hmm. is there agreement with uh, the Bern? Yeah, it's Swiss one. Yeah, Swisscom. Swisscom. Yeah, Swisscom should have a CLA signed. He just needs to go through that process and either either associate himself with Swisscom or. Um, but I mean, he he is already in the Swisscom organization, right? Yeah, that that doesn't necessarily mean that that's how it's set up. I mean, I can take a look. I, mean, I can take a look right now. Hold on just a second. But he still needs to, yeah, to click through the okay, he still needs to go through that and make sure that he's yeah. associated with them um I when you think, yeah i think when you are part of uh, when you have the organization you see that one when you click on the that button and you can associate yourself somehow so this is so to say the prerequisite to associate yourself with the organization to make the organization public yeah, your your login name and your 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 basically your username, email, and name should be the same as what you conf, uh, configured in with the commit. If one of these is different, then you need to assign the CLA. Oh, maybe maybe it's just the name in the commit itself. Yeah, right. Maybe it's not so much the user, but more the commits. But I mean, your GitHub sees that as. So that seems to be all right. I don't know what this login. I actually don't see a CCLA from Swisscom signed. Um, I mean, they haven't been contributing as much as they used to, so that's not that shocking, but. Um... Yeah, I don't see a CCLA signed from, from Swisscom. There are two folks, well, at least one who's active, who's signed an ICLA. Um, so yeah, they'll they'll need to they'll need to click through and they need yeah, so they need to click through you, click here to be authorized, either sign an ICLA or have someone at Swisscom sign a CCLA. Okay. Um and if the, the support ticket is also the please submit a support request ticket, that is basically the same flow that I go through if someone has a problem. So it's, okay. it's a little bit faster just to click on that if, if there is a problem and they think they should be authorized. Um, okay. CLA folks will chime in. So yeah, you'll just have to ask them to sign a CLA or have okay. Swiss code sign one on his behalf. Ooh, an update. That's a big one. Just search every place, everywhere. Oh, 
wrong button. Conversation, no. Conversation, yes. Um, Okay, this is pending. Oh, no, not open. This is pending review. Okay. You have things in the inbox. Yeah, I, I don't have Azure. I, I and also SAP have not seen any of these kind of issues. There have been no changes in the agent, no changes in the, we are running a, li a little old, uh, uh, the Vala agent, that's mm -hmm. Azure specific. Mm -hmm. um, in Jemmy, we already migrated to using, uh, using cloud in it anyways. Oh, where is that coming from? Uh, the agent. It could be also the Wala agent. Could this be also related to that DNS? Um, MAC address uh, broadcast. Does anyone of us has connected to an Azure? I'm not currently running. An Azure environment where we can basically. So the cross, I think the cross name is. The with it replicate why is, is it getting uh... so all of this worked only the safe state fails Well, if you look at the error, you also see that it fails to get the disk. Uh, yeah. to get the disk. Yeah, but that's all debug. Fail to load config from. But that's fine. It just means it's the initial bootstrap, right? I don't know. It seems like it a, a bunch big of warning. <laughs> No, it's all debug stuff. It, it tries all sorts of things. But standard error. Oh, running command hostname. Ah. But it, it the hostname is ent empty. Hostname, specified hostname is invalid. Right, so it runs hostname. Like what? 
um, Linux platform. Set up house name, yes. So it's running host name with a host name. So the host name is just empty. So did we up any update anything in the agent too? That should be agent ID. Agent ID. <laughs> Why is the agent ID empty? That should be in the log settings, here, right? Maybe settings. Because the settings are not available. When the H and ID was it somehow led to the introduction of nuts to all. Was the H and always uh, in the settings or did we introduce it later? I don't know, is it in the settings? I mean, this is the agent configuration that's in the stem cell, right? This is uh, Azure specific yeah. saying that we need yeah. to use config drive to get their stuff. Yeah. Then it's trying to go do that. Stem cells, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And files. It looks at the agent state. It doesn't exist because it hasn't started earlier. Successfully received settings from Fetcher. Okay, good settings. So it did find settings, right? Yeah. But then the host name is empty. Maybe we can suggest looking to the settings uh, how they look um, and why the host name is empty. It should be the H ninety. Yeah, and that, that should be here, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, when the... Couldn't this be the host name is still a red herring because the disks uh, could not be properly attached or whatever? But this is just trying a bunch of things, right? But trying... The Azure config disk. It wants to label the config from it. So. Yeah, but it has a bunch of options here, right? Sources. So it tries these and then it fails, but it I, I believe that this one works. Because no, you don't I see know anything that about it. Played with squishy device volumes, like it, because it was flaky in. Uh, on vSphere mm. in that was like in December. I have the, I have the pull request here in front of me. It's not a big thing. It's like if string has prefix basically. And it's, but that the SDA versus SDB thingy. But maybe it has some implication on Azure as well. But that could be weird because then we would see it like also in SAP environments. Mm -hmm. Updates.
I would like to ask if they can check the contents of this file, right? And see if there's settings there. Because that's used here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just put some notes and then uh, bootstrap. Was it? No, it was the Linux one, right? No. Something like that. No, I closed the wrong thing. History, that one. Okay, that is now in state or was already in state discussion, right? Ooh, backer. Someone was working working on that parse bootloader. Yeah, because I tried to. I cannot get it. Everything I built locally, also Constantine tried it. Mm -hmm. um, you think yep. it builds locally fine, but then when you try to run BBL, um, the extracted Terraform that's embedded is Doesn't not work. correct at all. And I tried to debug yep. this, but I could not get into it. So that makes total sense. I mean, I've had the same for issue, and then like we gave up, um, we just used an old version that worked, right? Um, that's what's currently still being published, uh, but master is broken. Yeah, so yeah, someone needs to take the time to do this. But this is at least a good uh, write up it's, of the problem. It seems easy, it seems you get rid of a lot of code, but uh, Yeah, and this was how I got into the whole wash bootloader <laughs> thing. And now I know that we're not using master, so probably what I responded is not correct now as well. Mm -hmm.
because here it says this AWS uh, and these TLS plugins, but in the master, it's like do something. Interesting. But CI was able to pass, but I don't know if CI is actually. Um... Yeah, so the TLS 1.2 version is in the 8.4 branch. So that's why you get this in the 1.2. It's not working so, with the new Terraform anymore. <laughs> it's already broken again. And I don't, I'm just wondering if we're actually testing on, I think we're testing on GCP. Okay. No, but it's correct. But I, it's still weird that his Terraform is because the Terraform in BBL is um, is embedded. It extracts to slash temp slash BBL Terraform, mm -hmm. and then it will use that Terraform uh, version. Mm -hmm. He said is using Terraform one three seven, which is ridiculously weird. I don't think he's correct. No, probably he. I mean, he's using BBL, and BBL is bringing it in Terraform. He just looked at his own there. You yeah, don't see Terraform here, right? No. But yeah, so we should upgrade. Yes, but then on that particular branch, right? Yeah, well, we, we first need to, yeah, in that particular branch, we can, we can upgrade this. Um, but we should also, yeah, and we should just fix master or something. Mm. Um, yeah, sharp pointed. Yeah, you look at this, but that's not. I have no ability to test it, so. Uh... Mm -hmm. And CI is not testing it either. So it's this one, then, right? Yes. Why is that? Is that only on the specific, you know, on the specific Mac broken? Is this the architecture thing? Why is it broken? Is it just downloads it? That's right. I mean, we didn't change the version. We didn't change the version of Terraform. So, well, we changed the Terraform version to zero fifteen like a long time ago, and maybe he's experiencing it now. I don't know. I, I I use AWS all the time, so and I don't have this issue. <laughs> you use Bosch a bootloader on Terra on Open on uh, AWS, AWS all yeah. the time. Yeah, whenever I need to test AWS themselves or whatever, I I use I use BBL. Yeah, but it's Darwin AMT. Yeah. So it's not an M. Not an M1. M1. We can also state that we support only on, yeah, on the stem cell one because the CI is testing. So, um, Linux. Yeah, on Linux. Um, yeah, I can remove my comment by the way because that's bogus. Yeah. 
want to know if it's uh, Mac OS specific. Yeah. I don't know how you can implement this. <laughs> I don't know how this uh, the pre-start scripts and post-start scripts are done. I, I thought it was by default that they would run I, on every mm, monogram. Uh, for so what that, that direct? direct sense the action to the agent. If, it's if not BPM, use, right? No, but if they would use BPM, then you don't have the problem because BPM has the also post start things, I believe. Isn't that a thing? Pre start, yeah, no post start. Was it just pre start or was it other stuff as well? I thought the post starts and pre starts were something that were picked up by the, ag uh, the agent. Mm. Port forwarding stuff. Which one is it then? Yeah, so they want to run these things before all the, the other processes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's not possible. Hmm. Yeah, that's a tough one because they want to probably net modify the network that needs to happen before everything else runs. But notifying about the hard reboot is also not easy. So is the pre-start a one-off job then? Hmm? Is the pre-start a one-off thing? No, but pre-start is executed by the agent, not by Monet. And, and post-start as well by the agent. Yes, because after, so it's before Monet and after Monet, basically. Okay. So then they need to migrate to BPM because that have a pre start scripts. Yeah, but that's before your process, not all the processes. 
right? So pre-start is something you run before all processes are running. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the problem is that after the reboot, Monet is still there, and Monet will start start uh, starting all the processes. So you don't go through the whole unmonitor monitor cycle. What they should do, if they are making network changes, they should make them persistent. Right? They should make their changes in a way that are injected into the OS so that they are invoked at the right time on a reboot. Uh, but you mean the reboot of the VM? Because the reboot of the VM kicks off the post-start and pre-start scripts, right? It's only the no, restart, it doesn't. Reboot of no, the it VM. skips them totally, right? So on a reboot. Oh yeah. Yes, because you don't have an agent interaction. Yeah, you skip the agent cycle. Okay, they do something with the jobs order to have one which is first and do the stuff. No, yeah, uh, maybe with monet. Yeah. Yes, that but then they shouldn't use a Pre-start, then they should just use. Yeah, them. they they but, shouldn't. Yeah. yeah, but the problem is with pre-start is that it is the right place if you want to make sure that it happens before all the other jobs. Yeah. Right. So they should just make it uh, like I would make it persistent through system D. I mean, it's not pure, but I mean, like this is already quite a big uh, hack, like changing the network stuff. Mm. And okay. if you interact with the VM outside the Bosch life cycle, outside Bosch. <laughs> yeah, that's also a pretty big edge case already. So. I have seen people do more crazy shit. <laughs> like with one, with one job, altering another job. <laughs> and killing yeah, the from Bosch. Different <laughs> I have to uh, go now. Yeah, me too. Yeah, have a nice Yeah, you too. Bye. 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 See ya. Bye.